They can't just come in and say, you know, I want to see everything in your car. I want to see everything in your house. I want to go through your computer. You either have to voluntarily hand that over to them or they have to have probable cause and get a warrant to do that. So it's very clear that the government does not have the authority to be spying on us. That was not the intent of our founders when they created this system of government. Over the last decade, we've seen the introduction and enactment of some of the most dangerous legislation ever to be conceived by our elected officials, who have not forgotten who they serve, but only now reveal to the American people through the fruit of their own actions that our rights and our freedoms are secondary. The USA Patriot Act allows for American citizens to be picked up and incarcerated indefinitely without charges and allows law enforcement to conduct warrantless and secret searches of Americans' property and possessions. The Military Commissions Act dissolved the cornerstone of our Constitution by removing the writ of habeas corpus, allowing the permanent imprisonment of enemy combatants and disallowing petitions to the court to know why you've been locked up in the first place. Although never passed by the Senate, the violent radicalization and Homegrown Terrorism Prevention Act shows us the mindset of our leaders in Washington. If passed into law, the bill would make public demonstrations and protesting into an act of terrorism and label the organizers as thought criminals and potential homegrown terrorists. Now that the federal government has the authority to sneak, snatch, and lock up its own citizens, a new bill has been introduced by Congress that gives the feds a place to hold those outspoken dissenters and potential domestic terrorists. The National Emergency Centers Establishment Act, or H.R. 645, allocates military bases to be converted into FEMA emergency centers. It also mandates that these camps be built complete with public works, medical, and educational facilities, just like the Japanese internment camps of the 1940s. Why is the media on one hand saying there are no FEMA camps, but on the other hand, legislation has been introduced to build them? H.R. 645, titled the National Emergency Centers Act, directs the Secretary of Homeland Security to establish national emergency centers throughout the United States. It's all being done for your own good. The bill directs these camps to be built in existing military installations, whether operational or not, for the stated purpose of providing temporary housing and to meet other appropriate needs as determined by the Secretary of Homeland Defense. Here's H.R. 645 legalizing what has already been developed, what's already been paid for by FEMA. And that is these FEMA camps for everybody's safety, these FEMA camps for everybody's comfort, these FEMA camps that the people need during emergencies. The government doesn't build things that are not needed or that there aren't contingency plans that say there's a reason for them. Also, it's been reported by a World Net Daily that the Department of Homeland Security has already awarded nearly a $400 million contract to Halliburton to t build some temporary detention centers on an as-needed basis. We know this is their main attack profile, is old, shut-down bases. And so you go point them out and go, look, the barbed wire's facing in, or look, you know, this is a designated FEMA camp. And they say, well, where are the people? Where are the people in the camp? The point is, it's a designated facility for that. Conceivably, these are the kinds of camps that could be used for political dissidents, uh, just like occurred in Nazi Germany. I got a feeling in the next few years that you may start to see uh, some American citizens end up in these camps for questioning the government. The president can declare a national emergency, and it can be anything. It can be a, a hurricane, or it can be political protests or civil disorders like we saw in the race riots. I think the government's anticipating that there's going to be a increased reaction against the economic downturn, and this could mm -hmm. lead to kinds of street riots and protests we've seen in countries such as France. If we do not have a government which is controlled and limited by the Constitution, then our personal motives and, and preferences are irrelevant. You know, it doesn't matter if you have freedom of speech if you're in a you know, FEMA concentration camp. It doesn't matter. You know, you're certainly not going to be allowed to have a gun inside a concentration camp. And, you know, all of our rights are predicated 
on a, a free America. And if we don't have a free America, all of the other questions become moot. Don't these companies have a responsibility morally if they're in there building camps and building shackles and building barbed wire facing in to speak out and say this is unconstitutional in the United States? Well, of course they do, but Kellogg, Brown and Root was connected to some of the contracting that went on at Camp X-Ray, Guantanamo Bay in Cuba. So this is their business. I talked to the Department of Homeland Security um, spokespeople and they affirmed the contract with this KBR, the former Halliburton co company, was in place. The Department of Homeland Security was ready to build these contingency as needed detention centers anywhere in the country in the event of any kind of a national emergency, including natural disasters or again, riots or protests. Just because you think someone might commit a crime doesn't mean that they have done anything and does not mean that you have the right to punish them for what you think they are going to do. You know, in, in our system of government, you're supposed to be innocent until you are proven guilty, not guilty until you're proven innocent. And so if you can be declared guilty or potentially guilty before you even lift a finger, that is bordering on thought crime. That is bordering on, on punishing people for pre-crime. I never understood these words before the thought police showed up at my front door. Liberty isn't something that we touch or feel or grasp in our hands. You can't taste it or smell it or hear it. It doesn't have a particular shape or size or color. It's intangible, elusive, and in constant need of nurturing, or else it withers and dies on the vines of tyranny. Modern tyranny is a lot more sophisticated than the Hitlerian or Stalin-esque things we've seen in the past. But even in Hitler's day, they knew how to sell it. And they advertised the camps as, hey, look, people don't like you here in the Warsaw Ghetto. You're not allowed to have jobs. You're not allowed to work. Get on the trains. We're coming to take you to a safer place where you're going to be able to work and be amongst your own people. They put them on trains, took them to the camps, killed the old and infirm, worked the other people to death. And they advertised, hey, we're going to de you. We're going to give you a shower. March right in here. You have arrived at Sobibor. You are in Eastern Poland. This is a labor camp. We have brought you here to work. You will work hard, but hard work is good for the soul. So in reality, we are your benefactors. You will be housed, you will be fed. All we ask is your cooperation. If you do your job, you will have nothing to fear. You will be given postcards write to your relatives, friends, to tell them that you have arrived here safely. We will mail them for you. Unfortunately, there have been reports that typhus has broken out at several labor camps. We do not want typhus at Sobibor. Therefore, first you will be taken to the shower facility, where you will each have a hot shower. Naturally, men and women will shower separately. Women will have their hair cut short before they shower. While you are showering, your clothing will be disinfected. Remember, the better your behavior, the easier your stay will be. 
As they roll this system out, this total federalization out, they're selling it as if the FEMA camp is a place that the disadvantaged and the poor and the illegal aliens as the economy collapses will need to come, will need to stay. Now in this more modern, sophisticated system, they're gonna advertise the camps, they're gonna show people getting the free concert, you know, uh, with a rock and roll star, or the Sunday night movie, and the free medical care, and they're gonna be beating down the doors to get in the camps. Another way is, is to have an economic collapse that's fabricated, okay? You just, you cut lending from banks. Nobody has any money anymore, the economy tanks. Okay, then you've got massive people homeless everywhere. Then there's a problem, economic collapse. The reaction is people get desperate and need a home. Solution is, ah, we pre present the home to you, which is the FEMA camp, which will be advertised as a wonderful place. Of course, it's a lie. So what you have there is they fabricate a problem to create reactions, which gives the solution they originally wanted in the beginning, which was to get everybody into the FEMA camps. That's our problem. This is the story of history. It's happened over and over and over. If you can detain people, I would call them quasi-concentration camps. In 1999, American citizens were put in the Sandpoint Naval Brig outside of Seattle, Washington, and the news reported that FEMA was in control of the operation and was using the closed naval base as a mass prison. And the people were put in plastic handcuffs and taken indoors inside warehouse areas that had barbed wire fences, porta potties, and cots. The same system we saw set up at Pier 57 a few years later in 2000.